Sydney and Australia has some of the fastest, most efficient train networks on the planet. <laughs> no. But seriously though, that's a, actually, a, actually a very beautiful train. It's, it's the Sydney V-Set. Uh, very old train, very beautiful train. V for vacuum, it sucks your poo away. True story. Hey guys, my name's Gareth. We do daily videos on this channel. Channel 2, talking about absolutely everything. Unboxing reviews and whatever else. We also have Channel 1 where we do weekly or fortnightly videos, depending if I can be bothered, pretty much. Uh, yeah, you can find me on Tallboy Gareth, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. Tallboy Gareth, there we are. You know, the train sign says... Yeah, so going back to high-speed rail in Australia. Well, if you're not from Australia, it currently doesn't exist and probably won't exist for a long, long time. But recently, the New South Wales government has released a plan on their webpage, you know, New South Wales government webpage, showing future plans for, you know, rail in New South Wales. So we're going to show you this video in a second. And yeah, I really want to hear feedback from you guys in the comments below what you reckon uh, could happen. Will this happen in a lifetime? Will it be, you know, five years from now or, you know, 50 years from now? I mean, really, it could be a long way away, but you know, this is what, this is a brief little rundown of what's actually happening. A fast rail future for New South Wales. Uh, the New South Wales government has a vision for vibrant and growing regional economies, providing New South Wales residents with more jobs, great, great opportunities and better quality of life. Let's quickly watch the video uh, with some sound and you guys get a better understanding of what's actually going on here. Can we make this a little bigger for you? Hang on. I probably should have done this before. It has to be a bit smaller, I think. There we go. The New South Wales government is planning to better connect New South Wales communities. There you go. We have started work on a world-class fast rail network that will make it easier to get to and from regional centres across the state. Says they've started. With four potential routes already identified, check these fast routes out. Services will significantly cut travel time. These are the different routes they could pick. Centres and surrounding areas. Traveling at high speed will make it easier to live, work, <laughs> and do business. Check this girl out. I just have to stop that for a second. She's like, look at my iPad. <laughs> Give me a break. <laughs> Let's continue. State, giving people more choice in where they live. I don't know. And giving business more opportunities to relocate or access markets. Work is already underway. It's already underway. The government will soon is move it? into planning. So construction can begin on the transport infrastructure ah. that will transform life in New construction South Wales Construction hasn't started forever. yet. So one of those four different routes is, uh, was one of the routes that they could pick. Uh, let's do a bit more you know, reading, just a quick little bit, and, and let me know in the comments down below what you think. But many of our state's regional areas have room to grow and... Uh, uh, and keen to draw in more investment, uh, generate job opportunities and attract skilled workers. The government wants to make it easier and provide more choice for people to live and work in regional New South Wales. Uh, so look, you know, these are the potential routes. These are the potential, you know, routes when you're really drunk and you found that person. It's a potential route. It really is. But if you're so drunk that you can't get to what you need to do, is it a route or is it a sleep? I don't know. Do you guys even know what I'm talking about? You probably do. If you don't, don't worry. Uh, potential routes. She better be hot. Uh, four potential routes have been identified as the starting point for investigation into a New South Wales uh, fast rail network. Uh, well, this is, you know, <laughs> this is the, the Northern Corridor, Central Coast, Newcastle, Tyree, Port Macquarie, Western Corridor, Lithgow, Bathurst, Orange Parks, uh, Southern Inland Corridor, Goulburn, Canberra, uh, and Southern Coastal Corridor, Wollongong and Nowra. So once again, there's the image, if we can find it again, of the four potential routes. I like saying that word for some reason. There we go. Oh, look at that. That's such a beautiful image. Uh, which route would you pick? Which is the sexiest looking route? Um, Mind you, you're drunk and you've got beer goggles on. Uh, still, what's the best route? M potentially Newcastle and, and Port Macquarie. It looks like, to, it looks like it's the furthest. Uh, Canberra would be cool, but then again, there's not many people living in Canberra. Uh, Lithgow and, the, and over the Blue Mountains to Orange would be cool. But then again, you'd probably need a really long, expensive tunnel, which I probably will talk about in a, in a future video. But yeah, um, we'll quickly go 
down again a bit more and discuss. Can you guys even see? Hopefully, I'm not giving you freaking uh, blurry, blurry vision. So, designing a fast rail network. Well, the New South Wales government has appointed Professor Andrew. Uh, McNaughton to lead an expert panel to provide evidence to the Premier. So this guy here, uh, he used to work in, in England on HS2, H, 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 High Speed 2. Uh, yeah, so High Speed 2 is this really, really fast network that they're actually building from London up towards uh, Scotland area kind of thing. My birds have been really noisy. Shush now, birds. But yeah, they've brought him down to do some planning. And will it work? Will it actually happen? So High Speed 2 is a new high speed rail network being built in the UK. First phase between London and Birmingham will be completed in 2026. God, that sounds so far away, doesn't it? But in reality, it's only, what, four, five, six what, years ago? Uh, away, I should say. Now, high Speed 2 promises to be a catalyst for economic growth faster and easier travel between Britain's economic hubs in the north and south. And the north and south will be you know, connected with indust industries and people. Uh, so a New South Wales focus for fast rail. Now, if you guys do want to read this whole thing in, in the entirety, I uh, probably, if I can be bothered, I, I will link it in the description below. Probably can't, can't be certain long distance, fast and high speed rail studies have been undertaken, uh, in, in Australia over many years. Yes, they have. And they've been fruitless. It's just led to nothing. These studies have usually focused on linking the, the, you know, the major Eastern seaboard cities of Sydney, Brisbane, Canberra, and Melbourne. Now, these studies focused on rail as a uh, com competitor to, to, uh, to air and road uh, transport options. Most of the studies found that the cost and required ticket prices for an interstate high-speed rail network would be insurmountably high. That's a big bloody word, isn't it? Insurmountably. And uh, insurmountably high compared to the likely... Uh, customer volumes. So England's obviously got a lot more people in a shorter distance. Uh, it's all compacted. You could pretty much fit England and Wales and Scotland, I think, in New South Wales a few different times. <laughs> Australia's pretty big. Um, so yeah, from, from st strategy to delivery, the government is committed uh, to moving from high level vision to, to planning and on to delivery. Uh, the fast rail network strategy will present a blueprint for, for how the network could be delivered. Having a, a strategy will ensure f uh, you know, future investment decisions on, on fast rail are, are well considered. Uh, you know, short to medium term focus, upgrades and optimization of existing rail routes and new fleet with services of at least 200 kilometers an hour. Well, that's a start. Currently, the trains in Sydney well, on the Western line in Sydney, you can't currently do only 120, 130, I think it could be sometimes, but the majority, the average is like, you know, 60, 70, 80, something like that. That's pretty terrible. Uh, we've even, you know, oh, I'm, not, I'm not even going to go into, but, you know, Newcastle and the Blue Mountains and uh, down down south to Wollongong. Geez, that's possibly even the worst. It's, it's, a lot of the track is actually one one track, not two. So, yeah, they'd need to dupli duplicate a lot of the track. And, and, the, and then some, you know, they'd have to do a lot more improvements to get it to, to over 200 kilometers an hour, which we will talk about in a second. So yeah, dedicated track improvements on existing routes will enable faster journey speeds, improve reliability and enhance comfort. These track improvements could include junction rearrangements and uh, curve easing, uh, you know, stuff like that, passing loops and level crossing removals. Uh, medium to long-term focus, dedicated high-speed rail, with new lines and, and routes, uh, good old routes, and possible speeds of up to 250 kilometers an hour. So yeah, a high speed rail network would require a new dedicated and purpose built line and new rolling stock. So that, that's what they're doing now, that they actually are building some new rolling, rolling stock for the regional New South Wales area. Uh, what else can we read? I, I kind of went through this a little bit before just to see what was important. Can't really remember now, but you know, once again, I may or may not link it in the description below. Give us a sub. If it's down in the description below, give us a sub at least. I've got to do it now, haven't I? Damn it. I've put myself in that box. Uh, mm, what can we read? All right, okay. Now this is something really, really interesting. Potential travel times from Sydney. Sydney's the most populated area in Australia, followed by Melbourne, I think. Then maybe, then maybe Brisbane, and then maybe Perth. Is that? 
Am, am I right there? There may be Adelaide. I don't know. It's something in that order. Now, the delivery of fast rail has the potential to slash, not, 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 not Axel Rose, but slash travel times by up to 75%. Well, that's actually pretty good if they do get it done. Uh, a selection of uh, approximate travel times could be. All right, so this is what's currently happening right now. Uh, if we can get it a little bit smaller for you. Hang on, there we go. Can we get it smaller? It's not doing it. One second, there we go. All right, so Sydney to Canberra currently takes four hours and, and seven minutes. Ouch, right? Uh, faster rail, stage one, or I guess you could call it, or whatever you want, I don't know what you want to call it, but if they you know, make the line duplicated and curves are less curvy and whatever else, uh, it, trains can then go 200 kilometers per hour. It would take three hours as, as opposed to four, and se four hours and seven minutes. And if they do get high speed, you know, 250 k's per hour, we can get it down to one hour, right? So yeah, awesome. Sydney to Goulburn. Those are the times. Sydney to Newcastle, which currently takes two hours and 35 minutes. Yes, I know. I've done that many times. <sighs> many times. Uh, it's not fun. Uh, faster rail would take an hour and 45, which is good. Uh, and wow, 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 wow. 30, 30 minutes if we, if we did 250 kilometers an hour. That's awesome. Uh, Sydney to Newcastle. Uh, I was, oh my God, I, was, I went up, I went up to, to Goulburn by accident. But yeah, Sydney to Newcastle, 45 minutes. That's not too bad. Sydney to Gosford, Sydney to Wollongong. Yeah, you get the picture. It would be a lot better. Now, will this actually happen? Uh, I don't know. Funding for fast rail. Now, the fast rail network strategy will examine a range of funding options and smart staging uh, to ensure each part of the fast rail network provides value for money and continues to progress uh, the project. So, yeah, it, it, we're talking about a lot of money. The investment pipeline of $87.2 billion over four years. Wow, you know, a lot of money to get this thing going. Uh, learning from international experience. So, Japan... Japan has uh, the, the Shinkansen, or the bullet train, opened in 1964. God, if, you know, wow, 1964, Australia. Australia, what are you doing? <laughs> I love that train. I really do love that train, actually. Uh, so, yeah, it opened in 1964 and was the world's first high-speed rail line. Uh, the network has, growth, has grown in phases and continues to expand after more than 50 years. Uh, you got France with the TGV opened in 1981 and, can, and connects more than you know, 150 uh, cities and towns in France, as well as cities in neighboring countries. You got the United Kingdom, United Kingdom with high speed one and high speed two eventually, that's different stages of construction, H, HS1 and HS2. Uh, in the UK has transformed the pro prosperity of small towns and cities, 100, slash 150 kilometers from London. Other passenger rail programs, regional rail, freight, uh, rail fleet program. So they're gonna be doing, they're gonna be building some, some new XPT explorers and Endeavour rail fleets. Uh, these trains serve as passengers traveling between Sydney, Canberra, Melbourne, Brisbane, and major, uh, major regional cities. So they're getting new, new, new trains. And the last one out of the article, new intercity fleet. Basically these trains, says intercity there, intercity. These trains are getting the scrap in 2021, which is terrible since they've been out for like 45, 50 years. They're honestly the most comfortable train on the Sydney network. Anyone who lives in Sydney who has been on this train will absolutely vouch for what I'm saying. It's such a beautiful train. And they're the only train in Sydney that you have to actually open the doors yourself. Uh, to, to when you get on the train, the doors don't open yourself, but they actually do close themselves. It's like a bipolar motor inside that train. It works one way, but not the other. I know, crazy, right? Uh, what are we talking about now? That's right, these trains are getting scrapped. Brand new intercity trains will replace the 40, uh, I, thought, I thought there were about 45, but uh, replace the 40 year old silver sets that currently operate electric rail services between Sydney and, and the Central Coast, Newcastle and the Blue Mountains, and the Illawarra. The new trains will provide more comfortable and unmodern features. Yeah, these trains are actually on the Sydney network now. They're doing tests. But yeah, uh, what do you guys think regarding this? Uh, you know, I'm a bit of a rail fan, I guess you could say. I've, done, I've made a few videos in my day regarding rail stuff. So you guys can go find that on channel one. Ooh, what a plug that was. Of course, you're watching this on channel two right now. Uh, if you're not subscribed to either of them, what are you doing? I'm gonna need you to ring that bell, please. 
please? Uh, I'm gonna need you to do it. You beauty, I uh, love you guys. I will see you for tomorrow's video, whatever, whatever it may be. I literally have no idea. I make these videos an hour before I push record. Uh, bye. Choo choo.